It's a chilly and snowy Friday and going into the Christmas weekend, so Merry Christmas to y'all. And I just wanted to let you guys know about some things I'm going to do over the next week. And we'll have a bit of a, a vlog today. I'm going to be ordering some seeds. We've got some production stuff. We're kind of just doing a big harvest. We're going to harvest one more big bed of lettuce in there. Harvesting a bunch of shoots right now. And getting a bunch of stuff to the stores so that we can take a bit of time off over the holidays. So what's going to happen over the next week or so, see how much content I have, is I'm going to be streaming out some videos that are very specific production focused type things like um, how to harvest, how to plant, very specific stuff. There'll be short videos with music, there'll be no narration. They'll look at them as sort of a, this is a preview of the new content that I'm going to be teaching. So coming up into the 2017 year, I'm going to be hosting workshops on my farm, three of them in June, July, and August. Those dates are on my website, though the tickets aren't for sale yet, they will be soon. And I'm gonna be teaching this same format in New Zealand. I'm also going to be back in Tennessee in October. I'll be in Arizona at Steadfast Farm in November. And I have yet to plan more, I'm trying to plan out my entire year this year. And uh, so that's kind of what's going to be happening. So I'm going to be taking some time off making videos each day and I'll be streaming out these specific videos with music over the holidays so you guys can continue to enjoy the content that I'm providing. So as for today, we are doing some harvesting and I'm starting to do the beginnings of my seed order. So that's what today's video is mostly going to be about. I'm going to be going into my basement suite of my house where I've got all my seeds laid out and I'll be kind of taking inventory of what I've got and then splitting the difference of what I need and we'll be getting our seed order ready. I don't think I'll be ordering today on a Friday going into Christmas, that'd probably be pointless. But right into the next week, I'd like to get it out before the new year. And this is usually around the time that people start ordering seeds. You know, you got some winter, some downtime to think about your farm. And over the next, couple weeks after the holidays I'll be talking more about specific farm planning and how that looks. I do my farm plan a lot different than most other farmers because my farm is very different than most farmers so because I'm not running a CSA program I can't plan my farm in the same way say somebody like Jean-Martin Fortier can where he can basically figure out how many weeks he's got, what kind of vegetables he wants to have in those boxes, and then kind of count backwards to say, okay, if we want to have kohlrabi for this week and we have this many shares, we need to have this much in the ground, when do we need to plant it? That's basically how, that's a really simplified, oversimplified way of how people do farm planning for market gardens, market gardens, but on my farm, I can't do it that way because I can't, I don't have the same amount of predictability with my markets. But anyways, we'll talk about that in future videos. Today, we're gonna to be checking on my seeds. All right, so I'm here in my basement and I've got all my seeds spread around here. And what I normally do to keep my seeds, like the way, the way I keep them, is in these little Rubbermaid totes. And I have, have them labeled with pieces of tape on the types of seed they are. So that tote was all spinach seed, or it should be. And um, you know, I've got beets and other root crops and carrots and so on and so forth. So because this year I'm specializing even further and I'm reducing down the amount of crops that I'm growing, I don't need to, my seed order is quite simple. And I think for the sake of giving you guys some value in this video, um, it'll be a little bit easier to understand how I do this. So I'm going to go over to my computer there and kind of show you a spreadsheet that I'm using and how I'm going to basically, I'm going to take stock of what I have um, versus what I need. And so I don't need to take stock of all the seed because a lot of these, some of this stuff I'm not growing anymore. And um, so I only really need to take stock of the things that I'm going to order this year and then split the difference and that will be my order. Um, for the most part, my general rule of thumb is I want to order, I would rather have new seed each year. You just get better germination rates. You know, I'm, I'm in the business of farming so I need to have good yields. Though I will use some seed from one year to the next. Like for example, I've got, 
I got a bunch of Salanova seed left over here from Johnny's. I've got about a third of that container full, so that's a good amount of seed. And I'll, I'm gonna make sure to make that, a note of that in my spreadsheet. So we'll go over here. So this is my 2017 crop list. This is all the stuff I'm planning to grow. So I've only got 12 different types of crops, but then you can see within them I've got, you know, varieties. So in Salanova, that would be considered one crop. I've got four different types there, green sweet, red sweet, red butter, green butter. And so what I'm going to do right now is go through and record what I have in stock. And you know, you, you can get really, you can get methodical about this and measure that seed, but I'm just going to eyeball it and then put a percentage and then go on that. So just going back a little bit to explain how I came to these numbers. So uh, if any of you guys have my book, I list in my book, there's chart, a chart in there that I list how much seed I'll use per bed. I think I even break it down to per row. So I know how much seed I use per bed. And I went back on 2016 and looked at what I had planted and I basically just did something similar. I know I'm going to do a similar thing this year going into 2017 as I did 2016. So it's pretty simple. I basically just added a few more of this. Like I, because I cut out a number of crops, um, I'm going to double down on some of the things that I'm growing a lot of, like the Salanova. I'm going to do more Salanova. I'm going to do more arugula. So this is the amount of beds that I anticipate planting. And so I'm doing everything in 50 foot beds now. That's relatively new. In my book, I wrote about 25 foot beds, but because I have some larger lots of land, I've been able to consolidate to 50 foot beds. So I prefer that. Um, it's just, you know, if I can have a longer unit, I get more than if I have a smaller unit. So I prefer a larger unit. If I had the space, I'd have 100 foot beds, just like JM Fortier, but I don't. So I, I need 50 foot beds. So anyways, I'm estimating I'm going to plant about 50 beds of Salanova throughout the season. So that's in succession. So what I'm looking at right now isn't doesn't matter um, regarding that as far as when I'm planting these. All I want to know is the total number. So I'm, plan I'm planning on planting about 50 beds of Salanova at 400 seeds per bed at a 50 foot bed. Um, this gives me a calculation on how much seed I'll need. And so this is figuring that I would need 20,000 seeds to do all of that. And so I've broken it down to the different varieties because I need to order those specific varieties. And when I plant Salanova, I plant 75% green sweet crisp. And then the other 25% here is split up between those three. That's why it's 8.33. And so that's how much respective seed I need for each of those. Arugula, I plan on planting 40 beds, 50 foot beds. And so at 23.2 grams of seed per bed, that means that I need about 928 grams of seed. And going through this, you can see it's more or less the same thing. I measure everything in grams. Uh, it's a nice, accurate measurement that I prefer. And, but if I need to convert, because sometimes I order from Johnny's and they're in an imperial measurement, I just do a simple conversion. You can just Google it. It's, it's easy enough to do, so I just figure it out that way. And... Um, yeah, here th that's pretty much it. So, you know, here's all my tomatoes. I'm planning to have 604 row feet of tomatoes this year going into 2017. And I do 10 inch spacing. So that gives me 725 plants. I believe that's slightly rounded up. And so I'm going to have 40% of those sweet baby girl, 40% of the sun gold, and then the rest, the remaining 20% will be split up between these four. So I'm only growing cherry tomatoes now. And um, so, that's all of them. So I've calculated how much seed I need. One thing I did is I always put in about a 15% buffer. So I always order 15% more seed that I need just in case crop failure or, you know, who knows what can happen, pest problems, you name it. So I always give myself about a 15% buffer. Some farmers are different on that. Some guys go 5%, some guys go 15 or maybe even more, but 15% uh, works for me. I'd rather have too much seed than not enough. Carrots, I'm reducing my carrot crop this year, only gonna do 14 beds in total. So there's my spinach, my baby kale, my basil, my mustard greens, my beet greens, and tatsoi. Those three are just auxiliary greens and they only go in my salad mixes. So I don't need as much seed for that. So this is basically what I'm looking at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go and look in my seed stock and see how much I have. And then I'm gonna put that in these numbers. And then I'm gonna subtract the, subtract the difference and then that's what will give me my order. So just looking over here, 
Got my Salanova. So this is when when you're ordering seeds, sometimes they measure in it, it'll say M, 10 M. That means 10,000. So this was 10,000 seeds. Green sweet crisp. I've got about one third of that left. So that is about 3,000. So I'm just going to go into my sheet and put that in. And I think you get the idea, right? So I just go 3,000 in here. And then this equals will be this subtract this. So I'm going to need 20,000 seeds of that. And that's pretty much it. So I don't think I need to go through all of this with you guys, but I think you get the idea. I'm going to go down and put all this stuff in. And then that is going to be my seed order. So that's my crop list. This isn't my specific seed order. This is just calculating how much seed I need. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump that into this sheet. So this is my actual seed order. And this was copy and pasted from last year. And what I've got in here are, this is what, these are some of the prices and stuff like that that I had from the previous season. And so I'll just put this stuff in here and then I'll order. I'm usually going to order from the same places. So this is William Dam Seeds. That's in Ontario, Canada. This is West Coast Seeds in, in uh, coastal British Columbia. And then I've got a few in there that, I, that will, I will do Johnny's. So these are my main seed catalogs that I'm ordering from William Dam. I probably get most of my seed from William Dam now. They are a Canadian company. They're a good company. They have a lot of organic seed. They, their values fit with mine. I like them as a seed company. Uh, and because they're Canadian, I, I prefer that. It's just with the Canadian dollar as low as it is for the US, this just makes more economical sense for me, but quite a huge order of magnitude actually. And West Coast Seeds is a great catalog. I really like, they have this chart. They've done this every year at the, in the beginning of their catalog that shows the seasonality of everything. So it shows winter, spring, summer, fall, and then you can look at a crop, so okay, corn, and it'll tell you when the season of that is. So it's really handy when you're starting to get, when you're starting to farm and you don't really know where your seasons are at, you can use this chart. In fact, the first year I did a CSA, which was six years ago now, I used this chart to basically plan my CSA going, okay, um, I want to have beans, I want to have bush beans in my CSA box. When can I have those? This chart was very handy for that, especially if you're in the climate. So if you're in British Columbia, this is a great catalog and that chart at the beginning is fantastic. And for all the, those of you in the US, Johnny's, one of the best seed companies out there. I love Johnny's. I try to buy as much as I can from them that is economical, but right now with the dollar, doesn't make as much sense for me to buy a lot of stuff from Johnny's. However, the only place I can get Salanova seed is from Johnny's. So I get all of my Salanova from them. And uh, some people asked about Salanova before. I, when I buy it from them, I buy specific varieties. So in my chart there, you saw the ones that I use. You can actually specifically request those varieties. In the catalog, it kind of has them listed as collections, but I buy these specific varieties because I've trialed them all and I find these are the ones that work for me the best in my climate. So that's basically it guys. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort out my seed a bit better. I'm gonna put them in, um, I'm going to organize them a bit better over the last se over the season. They got a little bit messy. There's some seeds in some boxes that shouldn't be there. So I'm going to go and sort all that out and then go and inventory everything I have and then subtract that from what I need. And that's basically it. That's all I'm doing here. I'm going to organize more of these seeds and get my order in. So I hope you guys have found that helpful. If you want to see more stuff like this, please hit the subscribe button right now. Good luck ordering your seeds. Make sure you get it done into January. Some people leave it too late into the season and then their seeds arrive late. And so you don't want to be one of the last people ordering your seeds. So like I said before at the beginning of this video, I'm going to, for the next week, I'm going to take off. I'm going to relax and enjoy some time with my family and loved ones and I hope you guys do the same but uh, I'll be streaming out videos that are specific content pieces and you'll see one of those tomorrow and give you an idea of what these are like and, and if you like this kind of content that's coming up maybe consider coming to one of my five day or four day workshops coming up next one I'm doing is in New Zealand after that I'm teaching three on my farm 
So there'll be 18 spots in June, July, and August for people to come, come from wherever you are. And I will also be back in Tennessee in October, and I will be in Arizona in November. All right, guys, have a Merry Christmas. See you in the new year.